We're in the second floor. These, there was a suite, of, some suites of bedrooms here. Um, there was one just there. You can see the blocked-in fireplace. Um, another on that side with the blocked-in fireplace. The, I suspect. Um, well, we we we're fairly certain. Yeah, there's a there's a beam coming down. Um, from there, which would have been the uh, boundary of that room. So that would have been the bigger bedroom with the window and the extraordinary view. So uh, probably this would have been John Ray Sr.'s bedroom and his wife, and um, he could get up at night. He would see the lights of the shipping coming in, going out, and uh, so, you know, he, he, he knew what was going on, being a factor for the estate and the uh, recruitment officer for the Hudson Bay Company. And it's such an enigmatic view. As I said before, straight on Canada. That's why John Ray, well, he would have seen all these ships, the younger John Ray going in and out himself. He would have met the sailors um, and the captains. They would have come to dinner here, um, and he would have been inspired, inspired by their stories and tales, and already known a great deal about Arctic exploration and the peoples living there. They would have exchanged all manner of stories about the Inuit, the Cree, the Dog Rib nations, and uh, so he, he would have learned a lot before he ever set foot on the ship which took him to the Arctic. As I said to you when I brought you into the ground floor where the pigs were, the floor above was probably a, a food store, feed, a feed store for the piggery, but up on this floor was the hens, deep little hens, and in between each uh, beam was a chicken's nest and they had free range over here and they will have pooed and all manner of things that chickens do and there was a hole in the floor just at that point where they would have um, swept and cleaned all the chicken manure and dropped it down into a barrow and then it would have been taken out the front door and dumped and also the chicken food will have been brought hauled up through there uh, and rather than running it up and down the stairs. So that's an, a good phase for, <laughs> final phase for the building. After the chickens had left, the pigeons came in and they perched all over here and there was, honestly, um, certainly two and a half tonnes of pigeon manure on this floor and there was pigeon manure down the stairs there was pigeon manure on uh, the first floor as well and we got all that cleared and um, they, uh, it was an immense amount well over four tons of pigeon poo came out of here uh, so but it was a great relief to get rid of it and then it was um, pigeon proofed again but pigeons have great homing instincts and they imagined the hall still belonged to them and for a little while they got in again and hence there's a certain amount of guano on the floor but it's nothing like what it was. So the pigeons, sorry the chickens living on that wall there won't really have recognised that this part here was blocked in. That's where we believe the pediment to have been. So you could have actually walked into that space and if there was a pediment here, there would have been a round window there allowing light to come in and maybe there was a nice table just here and uh, you can see there's woodwork up here which could be part to do with pediment 
We'll know a lot more when this roof comes off. When the asbestos roof comes off, we'll be checking out this woodwork and the head of, heads of the walls just to see if there's any attachments or anything which would indicate a pediment and what size it was. Uh, so at the moment, um, the, the one you see on drawings is, is kind of conjectural, it, uh, but there will have been something there, so we'll, we'll find out exactly what it was. This has a similar colour paint to the one below. But as this place dries out, you notice more and more. And the paint actually comes over this blocking, so that won't have been an original colour. You can see the stone blocking here, and then it was neatly plastered over. So I don't know what sort of heating there was up in this room, but actually, you know, it strikes warm without any heating. Um, hot air rises. So it, it may be that this fireplace wasn't totally necessary uh, at, at a later time. So there will have been a stair going, boom, a bit, a bit like a ladder, quite steep, going up to there. And there's possibly sort of marks in this stonework of supporting that. Uh, going up into there to this attic space. Now, um, if you crane your necks when you're here, you'll see um, that that rafter going up there has little nails in it, and every one along there has nails in it, which shows that up there, from there to the uh, east wall, was plastered. So we've got um, a bed space up there. We don't know how many spaces there were, uh, but I dare say there will be patterns of nails and things. There'll be something up there that would tell us. Uh, the rest of the attic wasn't plastered, um, but there might have been sarking uh, there. Uh, there may have been. It may have been dormitory for servants, but we don't. We don't know. There were roof lights up there, so you know, some there were little glass roof lights, uh, so, um, but, but we'll, we'll get the positions of those from old photographs. I was up here last week, just last week, with Ivan and Jean Craigie, and uh, they, uh, they, they were the owners of the hall, and we bought it from them, but Ivan was reminiscing about uh, the place, and because um, he, he lived in here, I think he was about five or six when they moved out because of the storm. But he came and said, oh yes, there was a, a door right here, a wooden door, and it opened out, out the way, and directly behind it was a, was a wooden stair. I, I think it was a pretty steep stair, because it went from here up to there, um, where that uh, hole is, and so people could go up and then into the room up here, which I explained uh, had been plastered. But on the night of the gale, the storm, 1952, uh, the servant lady who I spoke to you about told me that uh, the roof was blowing off, there were slates clattering everywhere, but there was a servant girl fast asleep in, in, up in there. There's a little bed space and they had to run in the house, go up and drag her out. She was totally oblivious <laughs> to the storm. And uh, so anyway, they took her out and rescued her and dusted her down. And, uh, and, and that's a nice wee tale. <laughs>